Hello friends and welcome to another video. When I first got started in music licensing and specifically in stock music libraries, I was very curious to see how much money can I make. I was following the big sellers like Pink Zebra, uh, Tim McMorris was his name, I don't remember his name, but he was one of the original guys who started in uh, Audio Jungle. And I'm only gonna use Audio Jungle here as an example because Audio Jungle has a great uh, breakdown of the licenses that we get, okay? But this applies to uh, many other libraries. And I just wanna show you some of the income that I have uh, generated quite recently, or most specifically, the recent licenses, because there's a lot of discussions uh, out there and misinformation, <laughs> quite frankly, about the fact that you cannot earn money selling music on stock libraries. But back in the day, I was very curious to see how much money these big sellers were doing and have a rough idea. The one thing that I didn't understand was that just because they were having one sale or another sale and uh, another sale and another sale and another sale, uh, judging on the price of the track and uh, doing some calculations roughly on how much they were earning per track, I was getting quite <laughs> motivated to get started right away because I, obviously they're big sellers, okay? They, they really sell a lot of tracks, or at least back then they were selling a lot of tracks, but I still believe that Pink Zebra is, is still one of the big sellers. I haven't checked lately, but I do believe that he's up there uh, in conjunction with other uh, top sellers. Um, but I was making some rough calculations and I was just blown away by the income. However, I didn't know that there were different licenses that these people were certainly uh, selling. What I've been my dad is that there are different licenses that you sell when you sell uh, music on stock libraries. And this depends on the library, of course, but most libraries like Audio Jungle, Pond5, and, and other various libraries have different licenses. They have different names. They can be a standard license or they can be a uh, broadcast license or, or whatever. But in Audio Jungle, it's a very uh, a good library because I can show you very quickly how these licenses look like. And I'll probably do a screenshot here of the latest licenses that I have had in Audio Jungle. Now, even though sales have declined over the years in a library like Audio Jungle, you can still get some big licenses. And this is the purpose of this video, just to inspire you to see what's possible. Now, before you go into the comment section and say that Audio Jungle does not accept new composers and you cannot submit to Audio Jungle, I'm just showing you this as a educational video or proof that you can earn money selling music on stock library. It doesn't necessarily have to be Audio Jungle, okay? There are people who are licensing their music in different stock libraries or different royalty-free libraries, which is the same thing. And, you know, you can still make big money. Artlist is one of them. Motion Array is another one. Now, the thing is that, at least with Motion Array, I don't get a breakdown uh, per sale. It's more about the downloads which is something that is very similar with Envato Elements. In Envato Elements, I have shared here my income for the whole of 2023 uh, per month. And Envato Elements just gives me a breakdown of what tracks have been downloaded the most and what type of income I get per download because it's a subscription library. And nevertheless, it's still a stock library and it's part of the Envato marketplace. So you can see very quickly that the breakdown of the sale is different. I don't get a full invoice. With Audio Jungle, I actually get an invoice. I can see who's the person buying that track, specifically when it's a big license. So I have, I've had very big licenses um, quite recently, and I have the standard licenses, which is like you know the, the bottom where it's just the first license. And the license will change depending on the project that the track is gonna be used on. Now, I'm only showing you this so you can see the transparency with different libraries and how they, not that transparency, but more like the breakdown of the income and what type of license am I getting. On Pond5, it's a little bit different. They have different names and I think it's only three licenses. I think it's a standard license and then there's a premium license, whatever that means. And, and I don't remember the, the other one, but it all has to do with the audience, okay? What type of uh, project this music track is gonna be used. So it, it all comes down to that. But in order for me to show you some of the licenses that I'm getting or other composers are getting for sure, okay? Especially big composers because, you know, I mean, I am not the best seller on Audio Jungle, all right? 
but I still do very well for myself. So I can only imagine how the big uh, sellers are doing. And I have friends who are doing better than me and they're not even on the top of Audio Jungle or any other library, but they're doing very, very well. And that's the purpose of this YouTube channel, just to inspire you to make uh, income with your music, selling it on stock libraries. But I like the way they break down the invoice because I can see everything. I can see how they have paid, okay, if it was with a credit card or via PayPal. I mean, it's just so detailed and it's breaking down exactly who this person is, what company it was, and, and what the license is. So if it's gonna be a standard license, or if it's gonna be a broadcast license, or a film license, or a mass production license, or whatever they have here on Audio Jungle that I'm gonna be sharing here. I'll probably do a screenshot, and I'll probably share that so you can see the different licenses and the income. Obviously, Audio Jungle gets uh, a percentage of that, and, and obviously I get uh, a big chunk of money depending on how big that license is. Now, uh, that's the reason why I'm sharing this here with you because you will get different results in different libraries, all right? Now, these licenses do not happen every single day, of course, okay? But when you see uh, a sell on a particular library like Audio Jungle where you can actually see the sales, okay? You see the number of total sales since the day you started to sell your music there. When you see one sale there happening or another one, right? then, and you can check this for yourself, by the way, then you, you don't know if it's a normal license or if it's a big license. And that's the thing, that by me sharing this with you, hopefully it will give you an idea of what's happening. Because back in the day, I would follow the big sellers, you know, the people that were doing very well in Audio Jungle. And when I say back in the day, I'm talking about 2014, okay, 10 years ago. And I will refresh to see if those sales will, the sales count will change. To my surprise, it was changing very fast. And I still believe that is, that is true today with the big sellers. I mean, I haven't done that for years, obviously, because I'm so busy doing some other stuff, right? Like composing music or doing YouTube videos uh, because I don't have the time. I'm not in research mode anymore to check how many sales the big sellers on a particular library are, are making, especially when you can see the sales count. But you can do that for yourself. You can go to the big sellers on Audio Jungle, for example, because you can see exactly how many sales they have made. And you can refresh that page as an exercise to see how, how many sales they get. Now, obviously, I don't experience the same amount of sales. However, I still make quite a lot of money just with Audio Jungle alone and as well with Envato Elements, which is the same uh, marketplace, it's the same library. They're just two different types of income. One income is by the individual sales which is with Audio Jungle, And that same music track is being sold on Envato Elements, which is the subscription part of the Envato marketplace or Audio Jungle, okay? And that's a subscription and this is where I get quite a lot of the income and every now and then I get a big spike of income with one of these big licenses. And the same happens with Pawn 5, okay? Uh, Motion Array is different, it's all about the downloads, it's a subscription library mainly. So I don't have like an invoice or an income report as detailed that I, like the one I'm sharing here with you when it comes down to a particular license and say like, hey, look at this license, you know, and uh, this is how much money I make for that license because it's quite a big license and, uh, and it's this track, right? So when you see that that track might have one sale or two sales, you know, it can still be a substantial income. So that keeps the, the dream alive, if you will, or that keeps the momentum going and say like, well, I could earn all this money with just one track, right, on a particular library. Or I could be licensing that track on multiple non-exclusive library, and that could be earning in different libraries uh, little, little income, and that will add up yeah, to a substantial uh, income, even a full-time paycheck for that matter. And it's one of the reasons why I like to share some of my income here with you guys, because uh, you know, $700 or $600 might not seem like a lot on a month-to-month -month basis by, by earning with a stock library, but that all goes down to your lifestyle and where you live and where you're based. I've spoken about this before, and, and for me, earning $700 or $1,000 with just one library is more than minimum wage here where I live in Greece, and, and that's just making music, and that's music that I've made like even 10 years ago that is being sold again and again and again in just one library. So I have that same music track on multiple libraries and obviously that's earning in one library better than others. And another one's just a drip, but overall that turns out to be 
uh, uh, substantial income with just one track uh, across different libraries. Now that I've added content ID into the mix, then we're seeing some different ways of monetizing uh, our music. And this is just with stock libraries. I'm not talking about sync libraries. I'm not talking about exclusive libraries or exclusive deals or production libraries or any of that, okay? I'm not talking about performance royalties or anything like that at all, just stock libraries. Uh, but this is just something that I wanted to do. I mean, I just I was just going through the Audio Jungle uh, invoices for the last couple of months, really. And, you know, music broadcast film license, Okay, that was in January, that's less than a month ago. You know, that's $320, okay? And, and like I said, I will probably leave um, a screenshot with uh, these different licenses so you can see them. And, and I have different invoices here so you can see exactly uh, what I am licensing at any given point, right? Normal licenses, it, it's just, it just varies. But the fact that you can get a music broadcast and film license, and, and that's not the only one I've gotten, but I wanna show you a recent one. I don't wanna show you from back in the day because, you know, yeah, you were doing well back then, but how about now, right? Because it's the argument as well that is online that the, the algorithm has my, might have changed in the library or something like that. Uh, and it's true, you know, libraries have changed over the years. You know, the sales were different. You can say that there's more competition, even though I don't believe in competition because if there is more composers right now, and you can blame me for that as well because I'm educating composers here, um, I've been, I've been accused of that. I've been accused that I'm creating more competition for myself, which is just ridiculous. I mean, I'm not even gonna get into that conversation. Uh, but I can see where this limited belief and this mindset comes from. Like you're creating more competition by creating more composers, whatever, you know? I mean, there are more creators right now, more than ever. There's more people that need music. There are more people that are doing YouTube videos. There are more people that are doing podcasts. There's more companies that are doing marketing. I mean, sometimes you, th you seem to forget uh, the, the immense, uh, how can I say of this? Uh, the, the rise of the creators, right? What is called the creator economy. I mean, I can categorize myself as a creator because I create content, right? So if I was just a YouTuber and this YouTube channel was about whatever and I don't make music, I would probably need music for my YouTube videos, okay? So there are a lot of people who are creating a lot of content. And this is where composers sometimes don't understand that aspect because you're just so in your cocoon, you think that, oh, there's more composers now more than ever because anybody can have Logic or, you know, Garage Man or whatever and make music. But what you don't see is the amount of content creators that are creating content that they need music, okay? I mean, you have no idea how many YouTube videos are, they are uploaded to YouTube every single day. And people creating content that they need content. And this is where stock libraries come into play. Uh, that being said, there's a lot of marketing agencies. I mean, I've done some background checks on some, well, not background check, but I've checked the invoices of the people who have purchased my tracks. And obviously I can't share it here because there is the full breakdown of addresses and, and all of these things. And, you know, but it's private information, but I've seen, okay, there's marketing companies. There's just uh, content creators, you know, just a, a solo creator that just has a YouTube channel or whatever. They are, as well, uh, theater companies, film companies, production companies, marketing agencies, they all rely on music and the best place for them to get a music is stock libraries and this is where we come into play. So the purpose of these videos that I'm doing here when, when I'm talking about income and licenses and different things is to just really crush that myth, first of all, that you cannot make money with stock music online in 2024. Okay, let's just keep it right now as it is for now, like right here, right now. Uh, because I like to just crush that myth and, and say like, hey, this is my income, this is what I'm doing right now. This is what I did last year in 2023 per month with one library where I can just show you exactly how much I've made. So I wanna show you what's possible. And every time I make a sales in a, in a, in a license, I wanna share it with you so you can see what's possible for you. Regardless if you're in a library like Audio Jungle or not, there's many, many libraries that you can join for that matter. You will find these libraries in my guide. You can download my free guide, link in the description with all the libraries. Audio Jungle is not in this list anymore because they don't accept any more 
composers, at least as it is for what, right now, but there's other libraries where you can license your music. I'm not in some libraries that some of my colleagues are part of. For example, Artlist. I can't talk more about Artlist because Artlist is one of those libraries where I have a few friends, you know, that they are part of Artlist and they do very well. You know, somehow I got rejected and that's fine because that's the nature of this business. They have friends who are in Artlist and they're not doing very well on Ori Jungle at all. And they're not part of Envato Elements either. So that's the nature of the business. Some libraries are gonna be better for you. Some of them are not. Some, somebody's gonna do very well here. Somebody's gonna be doing very well over there. And that's the beauty of it, that it's just not one library fits all. But all we need at times or at least me when I got started, all I needed is some type of evidence that this is possible. And my income goals at the time were very, very low. You know, I, I mean, I feel ashamed of saying it even today because I was aiming so low, but at the time I did not believe that it was possible either. My income goals were $300 per month. And, and, and that will mean, you know, as a stay-at-home dad, flat broke at the time, for me it felt like if I can just earn $300 per month, I can just be a little bit better, right? And, and I was aiming low, but at the time I haven't sold anything. I, have, I didn't have this to, to back it up, right? Nowadays, it's just one license. It's just $320. Obviously, the, after the fees and all of this, it's less than that, but all I needed is some kind of evidence and motivation in order for me to carry on, or at least to move the needle in the right direction, and that's the purpose of my channel. My most viewed video was my second video, I believe, which is making or earning a living by selling music on Audio Jungle. And I was just sharing my story of how I do this and how, you know, I'm doing it, right? But uh, over the years, a lot of things have changed, of course, and I have diversified my income by putting my music in different uh, stock libraries and, and creating more music than ever before. Obviously, working on my craft and, and never lose that, that aim, that goal of not only earning full-time income with just stock libraries, but at the same time, inspiring others to do the same and show the way. Anyways, I hope this video finds you well, my friend. Thank you so much for all the love and support. And don't forget to, to download my guide, link in the description. I'll see you in another video.